What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 45 in the Math 1 questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question is asking us to find the distance between the y-intercept of this function and the function represented by this table. Now the two big skills that this question is going to test on are finding a y-intercept from both a function and a table. And one way that we can get to a, a y-intercept from a table is through using point-slope form. So let's go ahead and get started by looking for both of these y-intercepts. Starting with this function, f of x, whenever I see any function that has a whole bunch of junk with x and a constant, this is going to be my y-intercept. So for f of x, my y-intercept is just 3. Because uh, remember that the y-intercept is what happens when x equals 0. And if I plug 0 in for x here and here, both of these terms would be 0, and 0 minus 0 plus 3 just gives me 3. Now, let's look for it in this. Um, and in order to do that, we have to first find our slope. Use that and pick one of the points here and use point slope form. Now, since this is a linear function, I really only have to figure out my change in y and my change in x for one interval. So, for instance, if... I pick this interval, my change in y is going to be negative 12, because as I went right from negative 5 to negative 2, I actually went down 12 units. So that's negative 12, and then from negative 5 to negative 2, that's adding 3. So that's negative 12 divided by 3, also known as negative 4, or negative 4 ones. And now that I have... Um, this number, negative 4, is my slope. I'm ready to go ahead and try to plug all of this into point-slope form. Now, I have my slope, but I need a point. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick the, uh, the point with the easiest numbers to work with. And the easiest numbers, in most cases, are the smallest numbers. Now, point-slope form is when we have just a point and a slope. So, for instance, if our point has an x of negative 2 and a y of 3, and our slope is negative 4, then I can take all of that and plug it into this thing, and we can use that to try to figure out our y-intercept. So this would end up looking like y minus our y number, our y1. So this will be 3. My slope is negative 4. And then my x1, my x number, is negative 2. And let me go ahead and fill in the rest of this formula y minus equals parentheses x minus parentheses. First thing I'm going to notice is that minus negative 2 is the same thing as just um, plus 2. And now I can go ahead and do some little tricks to figure out our y-intercept, like the distributive property, where I distribute negative 4 into x plus 2, and it gets me negative 4x minus 8, and I know that that still equals y minus 3. So now I want to get y by itself in order to put this in slope-intercept form. I just realized nobody could see that besides me. So y minus 3 equals negative 4x minus 8. This side is what I changed because I distributed negative 4. So now let's add 3 to both sides to get y by itself, negative 3 or minus 3 and plus 3 cancel. Negative 8 plus 3 is like if I owed someone $8 and I paid them back $3, I would now owe them 8 minus 3 or $5. But that's still money I owe them, so that's why it's negative. So after this finagling of this point slope function, we end up with y equals negative 4x minus 5. And once again, this is my y-intercept, the constant, the, the number that isn't attached to my variable in any way, negative 5. So now that I have the y-intercepts of both of my functions, f of x is 3, g of x is negative 5, I just need to figure out what 3 minus negative 5 is, so I can find the distance between, or the difference between these two y-intercepts. Minus a negative once again becomes positive, and that distance between the two y-intercepts is 8, so our answer is C.